Well, our next guest uh, this morning is uh, Wojciech Przybylski, is the editor-in-chief of the Visegrad Times. Uh, sir, thanks very much for joining us this morning. I just wanted to start a poli Politico uh, calling this uh, a contest between the West and Russia. Now, when did people start comparing this? To me, it's more of a contest between nationalist populists and sort of federalist liberals. Uh, would you put it that way, or would you agree with Politico and say that this is a battle between Russia and the West? Um, thank you. Mm, uh, I'll start by saying hello from Visegrad Insight, uh, not the Visegrad Times. We're an um, analytical and media platform uh, from Central Eastern Europe. Oh, sorry about that. And the 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 big frame on Russia is somewhat unhelpful. Uh, the elections, how they are perceived by uh, Slovaks themselves, is primarily about the support for the current government that indeed uh, has manifested a number of times already that it is going at length in the same direction as Viktor Orban in supporting the Russian narrative in Europe. And in that sense, of course, the meaning for Europeans is uh, through the lenses, it can, be, can be interpreted through, through the lenses of the pro-Russian stance of uh, the government and the governmental candidate overall, um, or the pro-Western pragmatic stance of Ivan Korchok. But uh, for the voters, the primary uh, thing is the autocratic state capture performed by Robert Fico, also the government performance in terms of uh, stability, prosperity of the government, uh, the government that has been elected uh, through a negative vote against the previous coalition that was inefficient uh, because of the domestic situation. And we should not forget that this is primarily the reason Slovaks are going to the ballots and the context of the uh, pro-Russian sympathies or simply ignoring the the perspective of, of Ukraine, maybe by some voters, is a minor issue uh, and not so um, prominent in the in the campaign as we might be reading it from the international audience. So yeah, that's, are that's right. I, I don't mean to make ability. it like a what came first, the chicken or the egg, but I mean, did those policies come first and then Russia joined in? Or did Russia come first and then these policies? I wonder if I, I wonder what your opinion is on that. Slovakia does not represent a country with such a strong opinion on Russia as Poland in comparison. It's, uh, it's a country where uh, the historical experience never uh, involved, the national historical experience never involved uh, being violated by, by Russia. It, so um, there is a different perspective. Uh, and uh, with this perspective, uh, Russia has been building its operations with Slovakia, uh, information space, cultural influence, influencing um, a host of, of organizations in, in the country in uh, stimulating the, the positions and, and to some extent policies, but the policies of, of Slovakia are not directly also sponsored by Russia. They are uh, imitation of something that is prevalent also in, in many other countries uh, when it comes to autocratization. That said, um, if the result is for um, Mr. Pellegrini that consolidates position of the government of Mr. Fico, the result, the outcome, will be that uh, Russian policies uh, and also influence on the European Union will only increase. All right. And just a final question in terms of uh, the, the co cooperation among the, Visegrad me the four Visegrad members. Should Pellegrini win, uh, what can we expect in the future? For this, uh, for this format, we've seen, we've, we've seen that already. Prime Minister's format has taken place uh, with Donald Tusk participation after a period of uh, hesitancy. There are two leading countries, framework and the most potent countries in the V4, that wish the format to continue, which is Poland and Czech Republic. Um, the format of meetings with uh, foreign ministers also took place in in Prague. The influence, however, which is important political influence of the grouping that uh, that we have seen in the past years and before um, is, is no longer to be seen. This is no longer the group that is united in its front on, on the European policies or that, 
that are uh, that matter the most. It's a it's a in terms of political communication, uh, it is a format where prime ministers uh, want to display certain difference of opinion, uh, in, but still within the format. All right, and um, for the for the people of uh, for the people of Slovakia, it, should Pellegrini win? Uh, what can we expect for them? Um, and should uh, Korčuk win? Uh, can he really provide any kind of balance uh, to the Fico government? The important significance of such uh, victory of of one or the other candidate has, to some extent, uh, the notion of of consolidating political emotions about the pro-Western stance or this in between pro-Russian position, which is represented by the uh, the governor the government camp and including Mr. P- Pellegrini. So, uh, should there be a victory of Ivan Korchuk, we will see a certain uh, consolidation of political emotions in Slovakia that will help uh, in strategic communication, and we would see that some fifty percent, regardless of the final result. Of the uh, of the population actually agrees with the with this pragmatic pro-Western position, and that's something to remember and and to to observe also in the light of the upcoming uh, European uh, parliamentary elections in June. But Mr. Pellegrini victory would not really be his own victory that much as of Prime Minister Fico, who would get rid of. Um, him of, of the former competitor within the social democratic camp um, and would uh, have more freedom to control uh, the stage on the national politics and conduct its state capture more efficiently. All right. Well, certainly uh, Slovakia at a crossroads. So Mr. Przybilski, thanks very much uh, for joining us this morning. Pleasure speaking with you.